So I first came across the theory that McGregor pulled out because he was in the throes of addiction on Jesse's channel. But this is a rumor that people that are much more credible than me, two sources actually today, told me the same thing, which is that the rumor is that Connor has a drug issue that he needs to get solved. Jesse was posing this as an idea, a rumor circulating between people in the know, and he does have contacts. So the idea here was that Connor thought he'd be able to curtail the partying for the duration of the fight camp. But as it got closer to the fight and he wasn't able to bring it under control, they decided that actually, this is something that needs to be addressed head on before he even thinks about fighting. A plausible crisis, especially in light of the infamous Roadhouse interview. Now, Jesse is claiming that Connor's twitching is something to do with substance abuse. I don't agree with that at all. I think this is clearly an alien wearing a Conor McGregor-shaped suit, attempting to mimic the mannerisms of a human being, but doing a very bad job of it. Now, his brain is so frazzled, it looks like he's trying to twitch us a message in Morse code. And obviously, this whole situation was bizarre, like not telling us what the injury was. Dana at times seemed evasive on the subject. It's like he was afraid another story was going to come out. We've never really seen this level of secrecy around an injury. So there was enough there to fan the flames of speculation. And the idea that Connor is battling demons is completely believable. It seems like that lifestyle is going to take a toll at some point. Just before the fight was announced, Connor committed to the idea of sobriety. He almost seemed grateful that something was going to drag him away from the party lifestyle. I'm very excited now. I, I'm not, I can't act the bollocks now. You're, you're, you're fucking flat out and I'm down these camps, but nothing's really there, so it's kind of like the old temptation. My lovely proper 12 Irish whiskey, my lovely Ford Stout, my lovely pension for a bit of madness. Now I had to do it, no, ain't no. I'm going in there and your man's gonna try and be swinging bombs at me. But he didn't appear to be able to deliver on that promise at all. A number of clips emerged in which he seemed to be preparing for his next role in a reboot of the 1988 movie Cocktail. So that's one of the biggest signs of addiction. We know Connor wanted to stop. He said he was only going to sniff his alcohol. So it just seems he couldn't. Now that doesn't necessarily represent crisis or that he is near rock bottom. He looked to be in phenomenal shape for the fight. But it is an early warning sign that self-control is out the window. The earliest issue with the rehab theory is that Chael Sonnen would go on to become the face of it which immediately siphons off a lot of credibility. Chael was using vague language, probably because he thought he was doing enough to avoid a lawsuit. And what Chael does here, it's really unbelievable how he paints a very complete picture. One incredible irony, that both sides have these massive interests in alcohol, and one side is in the middle of rehab for substance abuse, including alcohol. Connor is in rehab. He didn't say could be. There is no sense in any part of this clip that this is speculation or a theory. He was stating this as a fact. And then another guy is in rehab for alcohol and other substances. I'm just saying, that's a tough story to tell. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, the big guy came out they and said done. it. He wasn't supposed to talk about that. He wasn't supposed to talk about that. What does that mean? It means there's directives. There's a company line. There's a conspiracy of silence to protect Connor's image, and nobody wants to cross the UFC or the McGregor machine, but nobody tells a bad guy what to say. So even though he's been extremely vague, he's phrasing it in a way that appears to put tons of weight behind it. Like people know, everyone knows, they're just afraid to say it. One thing worth noting is how much Chael is enjoying this. That's an important detail because Chael would later try to frame himself as the compassionate one and McGregor as picking a fight. There's no compassion here. This is one big joke to Chael. He's really enjoying himself here. <laughs> of the Did Chael it just get hot in drink? here? Oh, it just got hot in here. <laughs> Have this proper oh, drink. I'll see you in a proper while, because I'm in a proper facility <laughs> right now, watching me not have drinks. So like, it's really impressive. He's created a whole fictional scenario in 10 seconds, in which he has positioned everyone. Connor is in rehab. Apparently everyone knows, but they're all trembling in their boots. We're not supposed to talk about that. But then you've got the maverick, the hero of the story, out here shooting from the hip. 
while you've got the UFC shutting people down, a shadowy conspiracy of silence to protect their asset. It's amazing. It's like three sentences he's positioned every relevant party in a scenario that he just pulled directly out of his ass. I mean, Chael can say he has sources, but we know Chael's only source is his imagination. And he has one of the most impressive imaginations I've ever seen. It's wild. Chael retired Connor one week. If McGregor does not show up on June 29th and fight Michael Chandler at 170 pounds, it is the exact same as announcing Connor McGregor's retirement from this sport. Retired Connor one week, sent him to rehab the next. So if you're following Chael, Connor is just like a fictional character that he makes up as he goes along. Who knows what he has in store for Connor next? Maybe he'll rob a bank or try to fight the King of England. Who knows? It's hilarious. Now, without addressing Chael, Connor quickly debunked this whole idea. I mean, I know he's in Dublin. The Irish like to drink, but I don't think the rehab center is going to have a bar in it. I think that's where they draw the line. So he wasn't in rehab. He's resumed life as a socialite. And it's obvious that either Connor's team threatened Chael with a lawsuit or the UFC came down at him like a ton of bricks because Chael did do a video clarifying his comments. And in this video, you got to see the full mastery of Chael's media savvy. And I'll compare him a little bit with Bisping because I'm not saying Chael has a better personality than Bisping, that's subjective. But in terms of media savvy, these guys are in different dimensions. Chael opened by clarifying he didn't actually know if Connor is in rehab. Conor McGregor in rehab. Let's clarify this just a little bit because that's getting pinned on me. That's getting attached to me. Chael son is the one that I do not know that Connor is in rehab for one. Just masterful right off the bat. What's he really saying there? The other day, I was spreading malicious lies about Conor McGregor on the major mainstream platform of ESPN+, where I positioned everyone involved and seemed to put the weight of insiders behind these lies. He has phrased that as, I don't know if he is in rehab, just like reframing his whole stance as speculation. But here is the part that separates the Chael Sonnens from the Michael Bispings. Chael is a master of misdirection. He opens with that statement, not acknowledging that he was lying, but reframing his take of speculation. But then he completely changes the subject to him being compassionate towards someone in rehab. Unbelievable. You know, when you consider how much he enjoyed spreading those lies, he's framing himself as the warm, sympathetic spectator of events who would have been proud of Khan. For two, I would not begrudge or tease Connor in the least if he was in rehab. I'd be very proud of Connor. And I would imagine that he would have needed to humble himself greatly. Have this proper oh. drink. I'll see you in a proper while because I'm in a proper facility <laughs> right now watching me not have drinks. But glossing over the lies and moving directly into framing himself as compassionate is not the only misdirection here. One of the first things he said was that he wouldn't tease Connor for it. Now, there's multiple issues here with that. Firstly, it's just factually not true. He was teasing Connor about that. He was buzzing. He was in his element. There was so much serotonin and dopamine flooding into his brain that they were coming out his fucking ears. And he was teasing Connor. Of the Michael Did Taylor it just get hot in here? Oh, it just got hot in here. <laughs> and I'm going to do this one first. I would credit him. I would never put it as a tease because I'm in a proper facility right now watching me not have drinks. But that's not even the issue. Nobody cares about innocent teasing. If Connor goes into rehab, people are going to make jokes online. I got sent this chill clip from a Reddit post, and the top comment was proper 12-step program, which, <laughs> hilarious. I mean, if Connor does eventually embrace sobriety, that will 100% be a headline in a British tabloid. But does anyone think the guy who made that comment, Wheelzebu, is bad-natured or a scumbag for making that joke? No, it's just a joke, a funny one. So Chael was teasing, but who cares? That's the sleight of hand. The whole reason Chael immediately focused on teasing was to act as if that was the whole problem, to move the emphasis away from the real issue, which was the lying. I mean, it's just so clever and so second-nature to Chael. 
I would not like to meet Chael in a boardroom or a negotiation. After five minutes, you wouldn't be able to tell up from down. I mean, he's unbelievable. But Connor's business is booze. So the idea that he's spiraled out of control to the point of canceling fights, disappointing 10,000 Irish fans, ruining the biggest gate of all time, wasting years of Chandler's career because he's going into rehab, that is damaging to his whole image and potentially his businesses. This wasn't an inconsequential bending of the truth. So Chael was doing everything to divert your attention away from that and actually framing himself as compassionate. It's, he's a character, a slippery character, but a character. And he's brilliant at it. It largely worked. I feel like there was far more criticism for Bisping than there was for Chael. Both of them completely sidestepped taking responsibility. Chael just did it with much more savvy. And after everything, he frames his lies as a good thing. You're lucky to have these lies. But my point, and I will stand by it, is you see the incredible irony. And the entire fight gets scrapped for rehab and substance abuse of the very thing that the red corner and the blue corner are out pushing, which is a brilliant point by me. And it's a point that only I will make. It's not a point that only Chael would make. It's a point that only Chael would make up. There's a big difference there. <laughs> but a brilliant imagination. And I really mean that. Very entertaining. I got great mileage out of Chael over the years. But as a source, no thank you. I wouldn't trust Chael to report on the weather outside his window. So at this point for me, Chael had really embarrassed himself with this. It was, it was a bad look. But he wasn't quite finished. Chael then uploaded another video in which he now doubled down on Connor not being injured. And then let, 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 let's say you know why he pulled out. Let's say that you're me. Do you tell the people why he pulled out? I mean, we're, we're all having to do it right now. Like, I, I wasn't sworn to secrecy on it. it. It wasn't a situation like that, but I do know what it was. So then what do you do in that situation? Do you just let the world pretend that he's hurt? This time he was more careful with his language, but seemed to be again hinting in the direction of substance abuse. I think where he is is an honorable place. When this video was uploaded, I thought it was just, honestly, I thought it was bad because Chael had just been shown to be lying about the rehab. And now he's thinking people are going to take his word for a new theory. Just like Bisping, it looked like a desperate attempt to sidestep a loss. Just muddy the waters enough for your subscribers so you don't have to accept defeat. But then it happened. And I cannot believe this. Conor McGregor not only released an x-ray of a broken toe, for which he has been mercilessly mocked. You bottled it, mate. You bottled it with a soft <laughs> toe. Don't ever forget it, you little rat. I looked at the picture Dos Anjos put up, and it's a, it's a bruise. I mean, I heard ice works wonders. What do you want me to say? Did you see it? It's a bruise. Ice. Ibuprofen. But beyond that, Connor directed a tweet at Chael, telling him to shut his pie hole, which seems to suggest Chael was at the forefront of his mind when he made the decision to release this information. The whole thing is just so funny. Honestly, this is just, it's so bizarre. And just like that, Chael went from losing on every single front to clocking at least one major win in this fiasco. Like the entire sport wanted to know why the secrecy, what is going on here? And Chael is out there appearing to make a complete fool out of himself but he manages to drag the truth out of McGregor. It's amazing. It's great entertainment. I didn't consider it like this until I saw Chael's last video on the topic, and it is just more fiction. He's tripling, quadrupling down on his fantasies. But in the comments, one of his subscribers said the following, and this was forwarded to me on Twitter too. Chael's strategy of if you want to know the truth, make up a lie worked. He threw the rehab thing out there, now we know it's a broken toe. So Chael won, McGregor zero. Oh, God. Wow. Is that what Chael was doing? I don't think it started like that. Initially, I think it's clear Chael was simply trying to bend reality to insert himself into the biggest story in his sport for the sake of ratings, to promote his new show. He wasn't supposed to talk about that. Well, that's why people tune Wait, in. We're over I, here on a subscription I, service. I don't think there's any way he thought McGregor would respond, but it does seem Connor responded to Chael by posting photos that proved he wasn't in a rehab. For most people, they would see that as a massive loss, but Chael's brain does not operate along normal lines. 
It's very possible he saw Connor's response and thought, well, 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 wait a second now. Yes, he just exposed my lies, but he did so by giving us a glimpse of the truth. So if I just keep poking and prodding and force the issue, will he come out with the whole truth? Honestly, knowing Chael and how his brain works, it is possible. He is capable of that. This shit is his forte. <laughs> so, like, if you evaluate this thing within the usual parameters of a dispute, you know, who was right, who was telling the truth, who was lying, Chael was just falling flat in his face in increasingly desperate ways. But if you evaluate it all on the grounds of the type of criteria Chael himself values, ratings, inserting himself into the story, getting Connor's attention, and ultimately telling lies to ascertain the truth, then it's much more complicated. And it's very possible Chael views this entire thing as a massive victory for him. So Chael's contribution to the whole story is certainly far more compelling and possibly far less ham-handed than it appeared at first glance. I really don't have the answers here, but the questions themselves, they are interesting. One thing that does surprise me is that this even got under Connor's skin. I thought it became increasingly obvious that Connor was injured, so I'm surprised Chael's theories got so much traction. I'll just run over what I felt were the key giveaways that Chael was not telling the truth. When a press conference was cancelled, Connor tried to project strength. The first image from his Instagram was him in a doctor's office, which did suggest injury. But he's smiling. He's not nursing an obvious injury. There was no caption, but if his demeanor says anything, it says, I'm doing good, I'm feeling great, I'm not at all worried. After that, every Instagram post seemed to point away from injury and to project even more strength. He posted sparring footage, then he posted a Father's Day image, then he posted photos from a movie night in the Black Forge. The question is, where is the injury? His leg seems fine, there's no obvious cuts on his face, doesn't appear to have mobility issues. And some people felt that this was the evidence that he's not injured, and there's a cover-up of something more sinister. But I thought the exact opposite. To me, this was the best evidence that there was no cover-up. Because if there was something shady going on here, and injury is the cover story, why would Connor be posting images that appear to undermine that cover story, and that he would know would fuel speculation into this grand conspiracy? If injury was a cover story, Connor would be posting images of him in a full body cast, not of him out partying like he's in full health. Like if you want a day off from work and decide to call in sick, you're not going to call your boss like, hey, 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 how's my favorite boss? Happy Monday. Listen, bad news. Oh, I'm sick. I'm so, so sick. It's awful. I'm in so much pain. I'm not going to be in. Catch you later. Ciao. No, you're going to be doing a silly little voice like you're on life support. Uh, I'm dying. So kind of projecting so much strength to me suggested that there was no cover-up, unless he's the dumbest conspirator of all time. The only way he's going to lean away from an injury, while the official story is an injury, is if he has an injury and doesn't want to look weak or compromised or to give away what exactly the injury is. So that was the first big thing for me. The second thing is Ariel Helwani. I don't want to dwell on Ariel here because he did see that last video. He left a comment and he mentioned the channel on the Helwani Hour. Senados Gelatos. Ciao, Ariel. Please tell me you've seen the mix Molly Whopper analysis of the whole Bisping situation. It's so on point. I'm still waiting for the genius behind the channel to get a shout out on the MMA Hour. So I do have to say, this was one of the things that I saw last night as I was perusing and was thoroughly impressed by his channel and of his breakdown of this whole thing. Uh, he's great. He's got a great channel. Uh, great work, great channel. Very, very creative and smart. Uh, and I enjoyed it and I, I enjoyed his, his take on everything. So that was cool. And thanks to Senados Gelatos for sending him the video. But I don't want to seem like I'm trying to ingratiate myself by speaking favorably about Ariel again. So I'll keep this short. But there is one more thing worth mentioning here. If Ariel's main source was in the McGregor camp, like his manager, Ariel would know that this is a source with a huge conflict of interest. 
Now, there are journalistic standards and protocols that have to be met with respect to all sources, but especially sources with huge conflicts of interest who may have massive incentive to lie. So obviously, Connor's camp would be one such source. What are those standards and practices? Well, things like having proof or having multiple credible sources corroborate. The question then becomes, did Ariel meet those journalistic standards? Now, we don't know. He could have taken Connor's team at their word, but it doesn't seem that way. Firstly, he said he had multiple sources, so that would fulfill one criteria. But the other obvious thing is simply the language Ariel used. On his show, Ariel was repeatedly using language that placed his reputation on the line. He gave guarantees. He said 100%. He said 1,000%. He spoke authoritatively about the subject in a way that placed his reputation on the line. I can also tell you with 100% certainty, I can tell you right now with 100% certainty confirmed 1,000%. But that emphatic language was not at all necessary. He could have easily said, I heard from a very credible source close to the situation that it is not X, Y, and Z. That language would have largely accomplished the same thing without giving guarantees that placed his reputation on the line. He'd be giving himself a little wiggle room if his source turned out to be unreliable. So to me, the language Ariel used suggested he did meet those journalistic standards and was speaking with certainty. The last point is that even though Dana was being evasive, the UFC confirmed that it was an injury. They 100% committed to the injury story. All right, guys, here I am again. Conor McGregor is out of 303 versus Michael Chandler with an injury. So you have those three huge things. Conor out here acting in a way that, to me, totally undermine the idea of a cover-up. Ariel putting his entire reputation on the line. And you have the UFC risking an enormous scandal if it emerged that they were lying about the whole thing to protect Connor. So I could just never believe it was a conspiracy. It seemed increasingly likely to me that it was just an injury. 